<laughs> Hi, I'm Gail Ashley and this is Lynn Drake. Um, we are here to do your biological PPE uh, training video. We will be do demonstrating donning and doffing biological PPE. Lynn is going to be the one that's going to be donning. Uh, in preparation for her donning, Lynn has already changed into her disposable scrubs and removed all of her jewelry. The one thing that Lynn will have to do is put up her hair so it can be contained. We've also asked Lynn to use the restroom and perform hand hygiene because as you know, um, when you get donned up into something is usually when when you have to go. So we're going to take care of that ahead of time. Once Lynn gets her hair up, I'm going to take her over and I'm going to get her vital signs and record them. The purpose of taking vital signs is just to get a baseline in case I become overheated while I'm in the room. So it's just going to be temperature, pulse, respiration, and blood pressure. Go ahead. All right, this is where all of your uh, isolation materials are kept. And Lynn's going to go ahead and grab out her disposable boots and put those on. They are the first thing that go on. And... Lynn, you forgot to change into your this will, your Crocs. Got you got your Crocs. Crocs. Got okay. Crocs Do you want the slippers, socks? The hospital has purchased the disposable Crocs in uh, various sizes, and you'll be wearing those to go into the um, isolation rooms. It's important that you, when you're putting on your boots, that you tie the ties in the front with a simple bow because you do not want to have a knot because a knot can cause aeros aerosolization of the um, anything that could be on your boots and it makes it easier to get them off too sure the boot the boots need to come up to your knees or as far up on your leg as possible and you do want to make sure that your pants are all contained in there Communication is extremely important between the observer and the person that is donning and doffing. Um, there has to be good communication, and the person that is observing has to give direct uh, cont or eye contact with the person that's donning at all times. The next thing that Lynn's going to put on is her surgical cap. Oh, right here. oh, she's already got it. Very good. And start it off down low from the standpoint as you start to put on other gear it tends to creep up so put it down right about the eyebrows and your observer can check to make sure all the hair is contained. And it, the cap is supposed to go over your ears. Okay, the next thing that Lynn needs to uh, put on is her N95 mask. And it's important to have one of the top strap goes at the crown of your head and the bottom strap goes to the base of your neck. Well, you got it kind of backwards. Yeah, it happens with these. Yep. And the observer can actually, this one here's got to go up at the top and this one down. There we go. The observer, actually, you can ha get your hands right on there and help them get the uh, masks on. And then Lynn's going to perform a fit test to make sure that she has no air leaks. You good? Here. Okay. Next, Lynn, we're going to put on your surgical helmet. On the back, there is a knob that you loosen before you put it on your head, and then it tightens to fit securely on your head. So Lynn's going to put it on, and then she's going to loosen and get it on her head good and now she's going to tighten it and then what Lynn needs to do is shake her head back and forth to make sure that it's not loose or that it's secure. I'm sorry I have to come in. Okay. Okay. Once Lynn has got that on secure the observer is going to connect the battery pack and listen for 
the fan. Yep, feel for the air. And then you hand the uh, battery pack to the donner, and they're going to connect it on to the back of their waist of their pants. Because that's where we found that it doesn't fall off when you're removing the PPE. Important to make sure your arm's not like this. The cord really has to be behind. Okay. Our next piece of equipment is the surgical hood. There is a notch here on the top of the hat, then there's a slit in the top of the surgical hood. That sits right on the blue uh, tab, and then you Velcro the hood to it, and then just like a veil, you lift up over their heads. and make sure it fits down nicely around them. Okay, the next uh, thing that Lynn has to put on is her gown. And um, normally, you, for training purposes, we're using one of our gowns that we've used, but in actuality, you would grab um, a gown for you. And it's, it's important to note that if you normally wear a re uh, medium-sized gown. We're recommending that you go up to a large, and if you wear a large, an extra large. Not so much because we're concerned about it um, going around you, but the length. We want the length on there. As the observer, it's important that you have hands on and actually help your uh, person don their gown. There is an inner tie. We are not tying the inner tie, as there's no way to really untie it without um, contaminating yourself. The tie comes around onto the uh, front of you. It's important to tie it into a simple bow tie, and you want it towards the front so you can easily reach with your left hand when it's time to come off. Um, so you can only do it one-handed. Okay. Once you've got your person in the gown, it's important to have them turn around to make sure that they are totally covered. And Lynn is, and it's at good length. It's covering her... Uh, down below her knees. Next to go on is her gloves. She's going to put her first pair of gloves on, which is a regular nitrile glove. With this first pair of gloves, the uh, cuff of your gown will go over the uh, nitrile glove. All right, sometimes, as you notice, Lynn still has her ring on. Um, Lynn's had it on for a good, how many years? 40. 40 years, and it just doesn't come off. In the event you have a ring that doesn't come off, you are going to tape it. It is, bands aren't as much an issue as um, stone rings. Um, you certainly would not want to, if at all possible, go in with any kind of uh, stone ring because that can get caught on your gloves and also can put a hole in your gloves. Okay, the next thing that Lynn will be putting on is these purple nitrile gloves, the extended cuffs. And I just wanted to show the difference between the blue ones and that. You can see that the purple ones are longer and going to go up on the forearm a lot more and that makes them easier or makes it less likely for them to be come off. So I'm going to give Lynn her gloves and she's going to start to put them on and while she's doing that I'm going to wait a minute. This is sometimes the uh, person needs a little assistance putting these on especially getting the cuffs the gown cuff has to go inside of these gloves and it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. So I'm going to go ahead and step in and tuck her gown in really well. Okay, and then she's going to put her other one on, and then we are going to duct tape. So you want to get the, the duct tape while you I'll this? grab the duct tape while she's getting that. The duct tape is located in your supply cupboard, and we have bright orange. Can it be other colors? It can be other colors. Yeah, it, orange is just what we have here. Um, whatever the, in your, uh, whatever is in there you can use. I think there's some blue in there as well. Okay, to tape this, you're going to want to pull off. 
there are two methods. You can actually take the duct tape and wrap it around her arm, or you can rip a piece off. I prefer to rip a piece off. What you want to do is, if the gown is bunched up, you want to smooth the gown out so you have a nice area to tape. And you're going to put the tape on, and you're going to check to make sure that you have gotten it secured all the way around. And then what you want to do is create a little fold so it'll make it easier for them to get it off when they come out. I'm going to tape up your other arm, Lynn. Okay, and now Lynn, if she'll put her arm, she either is going to stand with her arms like she has them or she can grasp there in the front. Um, we, we do that so she's not going to contaminate herself with her gloves or get her gloves contaminated by anything on her gown. So Lynn is ready to go in the room. When the isolation, isolation, isolation is called, Fast Track is going to jump into action and get this room ready. Uh, for the suspect patient. What, we're gonna, what they would start with is with the HEPA filter, they're going to turn it on to high, and the uh, commode is going to be brought in, and there is double red bags in the commode. The Dynamap from Fast Track is going to be brought over and brought into the room. On the stretcher, we have a special dispo uh, absorbable uh, pad that's going to go down for our patient. The patient is going to have a bucket in it, a bucket brought in for them. It's got personal care items in there. There's a disposable thermometer, water, uh, emesis bag, call bell, and uh, some toiletries. The regular garbage is going to be taken out of here, and in here we're going to have our double red bagged garbage. Some solidifier is going to be put in the room, as I said before or as you know, all fluids have to be solidified before they go into the garbage. It's important to have bleach wipes and um, the nitrile regular gloves in here in case you have to put in your third pair, on your third pair of gloves. All other unnecessary equipment has already been brought out of the room and uh, this room is ready to go. Okay, Lynn has gone in the room and she's gonna shut the door behind her and um, she would be starting to take care of the patient. As you notice, I am here in the window. I will be right observing Lynn the entire time that she's in the room, um, watching for any signs of breach of uh, PPE and um, communicating with her by knocking on the window if she needs something. She can talk to me because I can hear her. Okay, Lynn, let's say that you have to take care of the commode. You're going to want to put on your third pair of gloves before you do so. There are gloves in the room, and you're going to uh, put them on over top of your purple nitrile gloves. You want to put on a third pair of gloves anytime that you're going to be handling anything that has blood, um, urine, feces, um, or, or, or drawing any kind of blood specimens. Um, you put them on in the room, and then they would be taken off in the room before you get ready to leave. In any event, if that glove should get torn while you're in the room, your observer is going to be watching you and notifying you of that, and you would have to uh, begin a bleach process. Lynn's gonna go over and take care of um, the commode, and she's going to solidify it. So go ahead and solidify your commode. And it's important just, I mean, this is the PPE training, but just a reminder that all fluids and body secretions, excretions are solidified before they go into the garbage. Lynn is done doing um, the solidifying, so she's going to go ahead and dispose of the solidifier uh, bottle into the garbage, and she's going to remove her third pair of glove using the glove-in technique. It's extremely important that you try not to contaminate your under gloves. And once she's removed those and discarded them in the garbage, I'm going to instruct Lynn to begin her four-minute bleach wipes. So Lynn, if you could go ahead and take the bleach wipes 
and let me, I'll watch and see when you start and time you. Bleach has a four minute wet time, so it's important that you uh, wipe basically for four minutes. If your little towel gets uh, dry, please feel free to get a, another one. It's in wash um, up to the duct tape as far as, as far as you should go. The other thing before you leave the room it is um, you should take a bleach wipe and wipe down the door handle as well before you get ready to leave the room. Okay, Lynn just finished doing her four minute bleach from the removal of her third pair of gloves. She may have more to do in the room and um, she can go ahead and do that. Before she gets ready to leave the room, she does need to do a four minute bleach. And this will be the only time that she is not being directly observed because while she's bleaching, I'm gonna be going next door and getting the ante room set up for the doffing. Okay, Lynn, it's time to do your final bleach. Please, I'm going to time you. Go ahead and start. While you're doing that, I'm going to go next door and get the doffing pad ready. Okay, I'm going to get the doffing area set up for Lynn to come out. And the first thing that goes down is the doffing pad. And you open it up, and it, in here it goes the length way in front of the door. And you want to smooth it out so nobody's going to trip, trip on it coming out the door. The other thing is the computer. I'm going to push this back up out of the way. And I'm going to make sure that's straight. Okay, the next thing we have is you need two chairs. The first chair is going to be set over here. <laughs> set it off, off in the doffing pad and the second chair goes at the end here off in the doffing pad and then you're going to take your garbage can and your garbage goes here it does have to be a double uh, bagged red garbage something else in the room that is extremely important is we need to make sure we have a box of the gleves nitrile gloves here and the ble some bleach wipes here. In addition, uh, we have added a hand sanitizer right here that you'll be able to reach from the doffing pad. We also have a, our bucket here that the Crocs are gonna go into once um, they're taken off. All right, Lynn's four minutes are up, <clears throat> so let's go over and I'm gonna have her step out. I'm supposed to shut the other door. Okay, Lynn, your four minutes are up, so I'm going to have you go ahead and um, open the door and make sure you step onto the pad. So go ahead. And shut the door behind you. Very good. Okay, we're going to begin the doffing process now. The first thing that I'm going to have you do is to remove the... Uh, duct tape from around your gloves and discard it into the garbage. And very good. Now you're going to be taking off your purple nitrile gloves. So go ahead and remove them using the glove in technique. Um, it's important, Lynn, that you do stay on the one side. Once we remove your disposable boots, we will be having you step to the far side of the doffing pad, which is the clean area. Okay, we've removed your first pair of gloves. We're now going to remove your gown. Starting at the top, you're going to loosen the Velcro, and you may use both hands to do so. While you're disrobing, remember the inside and the back of your PPE are clean. You want to roll it to the inside, not contaminating your gloves. Once you have rolled it into a ball, and Lynn's doing a very nice job keeping it away from her body, you're going to put it right into the garbage. Okay, 
next is where we're going to have Lynn go ahead and sit in the chair, the first chair, and remove your disposable boots. This again is important that you untie the boots and you want to make sure you do not touch your pant, inner pants when you are removing um, the surgical boots. Lynn is going to start at the top and she's going to roll them onto, her, onto themselves down and slide them off her feet. Now if your Crocs come off with it, they go in the garbage as well, but hopefully they won't. If you, the way Lynn has the Crocs on with the band behind her heel it really helps keep them on. That's what I recommend that everybody does. So she's going to remove that. And now, Lynn, I'm going to ask you to stand and move over to the clean side of the doffing pad. Okay, very good. Now we're going to have you remove your inner pair of gloves using the glove-in technique. and discard them. I'd like you to step over and use the hand sanitizer and sanitize your hands. And once you've done that, we're going to have you grab another pair of gloves and put on a second pair or a new pair of the regular nitrile gloves. In, Lynn normally would wear like a medium sized glove and we did put in there for her um, do doffing um, large gloves because that just makes it a little easier when your hands are wet from the hand sanitizer. So once Lynn gets her gloves on, the next thing that we're going to be doing is uh, removing the surgical hood. To, re to remove the surgical hood, it's good if you stand sideways so your observer can see the back of your um, surgical hood. Lynn's going to reach back with two hands and she's going to scrunch up the uh, surgical hood till she gets it nearly the top and then she's going to lift it off up over her head and away from her body and that goes right into the garbage. Okay, now we've gotten off the majority of the contaminated um, PPE, we are going to go ahead and change our gloves again. So using the glove-in technique, we're going to remove the gloves, discard them. Lynn is going to perform hand sanitizing. And she'll be putting on a new pair of gloves. And don't worry, if you drop something, just leave it. We'll get it later. <laughs> okay. Once Lynn gets her gloves on, the next thing to be removed is the surgical hood. Lynn's going to reach up and unscrew the knob on the surgical helmet and take that off and then she's going to reach back and remove the battery pack from the back of her waist of her pants. Then she should disconnect it. She can set the helmet on the chair and then disconnect the battery pack and you want to put it in the chair that you sat in for your when you removed your boots. Okay the next thing to uh, remove is the respirator and surgical cap. Reaching back um, you can hold the lower corner of the mask and then reach back and you're going to remove the straps from off the thing. If your surgical hood sh or cap should come off at the same time, no big deal. Just discard it right in the garbage with the respirator. Pull it away from your face and put it in. Now at this point your hair may be a little disarrayed. You are not to touch your hair, uh, just go with the flow. Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to have Lynn uh, bleach her shoes. She's going to take bleach wipes and she's going to uh, set uh, two bleach wipes on the floor. And set her shoes on them.
And then while she's doing that, she uh, has got her feet on the bleach wipe. She's going to bleach the uh, out, or outer top and back of her Crocs. And again, the four minute wet time is, or the wet time is four minutes. Um, so they have to be wet for four minutes. And as Lynn's doing, she can set, the, after she's wiped them, she can set the uh, wipes on there. And then I, as the observer, will time her and let her know when her four minutes are up. Throughout the procedure, it's really important to know where your hands are at all times, so I highly recommend that you keep your hands in front of you and visible when you're done, and either have them like this or hold them together so you don't accidentally want to rub your nose or fuss with your hair. Okay, Lynn, your four minutes are up for your bleach wipes. Go ahead and throw away the, the wipes. And I'm going to have you step off in the doffing pad. And I'm going to have you roll up your doffing pad onto itself without trying to um, aerosolize it at all. And then that will go into the garbage as well. Okay. Now, Lynn, I'm going to have you remove your clogs, your crocs, and put them right into the container with the bleach wipes. Okay, now if you can stand, I'm going to have you go ahead and remove your inner gloves using the glove-in technique and perform hand, side, hand hygiene. Another important safety feature is the fact that we don't rush through the procedure. Myself, as the person who's donning and doffing, I have to stay in contact with my observer. I got to make sure my observer has her or his eyes on me at all times in case I accidentally contaminate myself somehow. So I really need to stop. I need to watch my observer. When she finishes telling me what to do, then I need to go forward in doing it so I make sure her eyes are on me. The other thing I'd like to add as a safety feature is there's going to be a lot of commotion going on if, if and when we ever have a suspect Ebola patient brought into our emergency department. So that observer and Donner have to be in connection. I just uh, will reinforce what Lynn just said. They, whoever you are watching as the observer has to have your undivided attention. You have to shut out everything else that's going on in the department. It's just vital for people's safety. Another important safety feature for myself or anybody else who's in the role of donning the equipment, and if you're in the room at any time you start to feel lightheaded, dizzy, overheated, you have to let your observer know. Just say, I'm getting overheated, whatever, so that they can start that four-minute process of you wiping off your hands with the bleach and then coming out here. In most instances, we find as soon as the equipment comes off, you get a little bit more air and people do feel better, but take your time, sit down, walk, make sure you have the observer watching you at all times. Okay, once we're all done in the room and all of the PP has been removed, the person is going to go down to the shower. Myself as the observer, I'm going to gather her clothes and escort her down. I'm going to open all doors and push the elevator buttons. So let's go, Lynn. Are you feeling and, okay? Yes, and it's still a good idea to keep your hands here because just in case something's on your hand, you didn't get it off completely yet, that you're not touching anything, and that's why your observer is going to open everything up for you. Okay. All right, Lynn, let's go. Let's recap. Um, for your safety and everyone else's safety, we want to make sure to stress that you do not rush. Take your time. It's important to have good communication. You need to have eye-to-eye -eye contact with your observer. Um, if they're looking at their clipboard, reading off what you need to do next, you need to wait and make sure that they are looking at you when you are doing whatever they are saying you do, before you do whatever they say that you need to do. And you just really need to listen, and again, we can't stress enough the good communication. Thank you.